Lavender Castle. The place of legend, fabled right across the universe. This is our quest to find it. Lavender Castle, in the beginning. Flying in the space skies of a parallel universe very different to our own was an old half-timbered spaceship called the Paradox. Inside, its elderly captain, Captain Frice, was talking to his engineer, Isambard, about a place called Lavender Castle. Isambard had just been rescued by Captain Frice from an escape capsule he ended up in after blowing up his own spaceship, so he didn't know what he was in for just yet, but he listened, intrigued as ever. Lavender Castle is the source of all light in the universe. Should you destroy it, the universe will be plunged into darkness forever, said Captain Frice wisely. How do you know that, Captain? inquired Isambard. We've been to Lavender Castle before, came a voice. It belonged to Captain Frice's walking stick, which had been given life by Lavender Castle on Frice's previous visit there. Yes, but that was a long time ago. Now my old enemy, Dr. Aegon, wants to destroy it, replied Captain Frice worryingly. Isambard, too, was worried. But we're no match for him. He's way more powerful than us, he said. Suddenly, Captain Frice had a plan. We could get strength from Lavender Castle, said Captain Frice in the sort of tone that only somebody making a plan could have. Aye, and we'll be more stronger, replied Isambard confidently. There was, however, one slight flaw in the plan which Isambard was quick to point out. But Captain, we'll need a full crew if we're going to beat him to it. And I think I know where to find one, said Captain Frice confidently. Meanwhile, in another part of the galaxy, a pirate ship called the Cutting Snark was sailing on the Galactic Sea, a sea flowing all throughout the space skies. On board was its captain, the space pirate Short Fred Led, and his recent prisoners, a space freighter pilot called Roger, and a medical student called Lyca. Roger's space freighter, the Firefly, had just been attacked by Short Fred Led, and for him and Lyca, it now looked pretty hopeless. Pirates used to attack other ships, but now they're attacking space freighters, said Roger in disbelief. And if your cannons hadn't jammed, I'd have been continuing my medical research, replied Lyca annoyed that her research had been interrupted. Roger felt guilty about what had happened. All he could say was, I'm very sorry, Lyca. Over in the corner, Lyca noticed a robot holding a lantern. Can we have some light over here? She called. The robot knew he wasn't supposed to take orders from prisoners, but he came over anyway. Are you a prisoner too? Asked Roger in the politest way he knew to ask. My name is Sir Squigalot, introduced the robot. I was the ship's robot on board the QZ-3, before it was sunk. Sir Squeakalot? retorted Roger. That's a bit of a mouthful. Why don't we call you Squeaky? Sir Squeakalot wasn't too sure. And will you wear on my squeaky drinks, Mr. Roger? He said nervously. Just then... Short Fred Led himself came into the room, taking everyone by surprise. Scuttle me bones! He roared. What's going on here? 
Squeaky had to think of an excuse and fast. I'm just, um, checking the cargo, sir, he said, worried about what Short Fred Leck would do to him if he wasn't convinced. Luckily, however, he was. As you should be, said Short Fred Leck. He then turned to his new prisoners. And as for you two, you'll be glad of some company when you find out who's coming for you, added Short Fred Leck, who laughed as he exited the room. When he was sure that the space pirate had left, Roger turned to Lyca. He was now more determined than ever to escape. We've got to get out of here, he said. But Lyca wasn't too sure. We're a billion light years from anywhere, Roger, she interjected. Who could save us now? Don't give up, Lyca, encouraged Roger. There's always hope. Secretly, Lyca hoped that for the first time in her life, she would be wrong. At the same time, Captain Thrice was taking every shortcut he knew in order to get the Paradox to the Cutting Snark's current location before Dr. Aegon could get there. It was important that Thrice got there first, otherwise his quest to find Lavender Castle would be over before it even started. He called to Isambard on one of the Paradox's many radios. Isambard, full power, he said with a sense of urgency. Isambard wasted no time in replying with, Aye aye, Captain! Isambard's MD646 engine, aside from being rare, wasn't like other engines in the galaxy. To make it work, Isambard would hit it with a special hammer in order to bring it up to full power. And this time was no exception. He hit it and pushed the paradox to full power. Back on board the cutting snark, Squeaky heard the rumble of a distant spacecraft. He immediately recognised it as Dr. Aegon's dark station, so he went up to Roger and Lyca to tell them what he planned to do. Dr. Aegon's coming! I'll have to get you out of here before he gets on board, said Squeaky. Hold still, Miss Lyca, he added before activating his laser. But Squeaky was interrupted by the sound of an angry trumpet. <coughs> Dr. Aegon's mammoth machine had arrived. Lyca, Roger and Squeaky were led by Short Fred Led out of the ship's dungeon and onto the deck, awaiting what Dr. Aegon would have in store for them. Dr. Aegon was the evil commander of the Dark Station, the most powerful spaceship in the universe that could destroy an entire sun. He stepped forward to examine his new prisoners. Here you are, Dr. Aegon, sir! said Short Fred Led, trying to sound as pirate-like as he could without being intimidated by Aegon himself. Just like I promised! Aegon, however, wasn't impressed. I take it the market for prisoners is a bit slow, he questioned in a voice that would make the devil shake with fear. By now, Short Fred Led was panicking. Um, and I'll give you this robot too, said a desperate Led, pointing to Squeaky. He's brand new! As Short Fred Leg patted Squeaky with his hook, however, he accidentally tore off his arm. Well, nearly brand new, said Led. I will think it over, said Dr. Aegon, walking off to another part of the ship. Up on the Cutting Snark's crow's nest, Short Fred Led's orphan navigator, who was called Sproggle, was looking through his telescope but through the wrong end, as per usual. What do we see? asked Sproggle. We see... a ship! The ship he had just spotted was the Paradox, and it was about to land on the deck of the Cutting Snark. He called down to the prisoners, There's a ship! Roger was filled with newly found optimism. I told you there was always hope! He said to Lyca, who, for the first time in her life, was wrong. Dr. Aegon, on the other hand, was furious. Not him again, he muttered under his breath, knowing who would be on board. Sproggle quickly climbed down from the crow's nest and went to see who this strange ship belonged to. He was greeted with the sight of Captain Thrice and Isambard tumbling out of one of the Paradox's doors and onto the Cutting Snark's deck, not quite the entrance they had in mind. Who are you? 
Austin and the Wicked yet puzzled short fact that you can't just land on my deck like that. My name is Captain Thrice. This is my new engineer, Isambard, and this is my walking stick, announced Captain Thrice in a grand way, making up for his not so grand entrance. You come near the cutting snark again, and I'll snapped Shortfred then. He had been cut off by one of the walking sticks lavender rays, which froze him in place, leaving him unable to walk or speak. You'll what? asked Captain Thrice, waiting for an answer that he knew wouldn't come for a while. He then turned to Squeaky. Mr. Machine, free the prisoners. Squeaky was more than happy to oblige. He continued the job he started to do in the Cutting Snark's dungeons, which was that of freeing Roger and Lyca. Thanks, Squeaky, said Lyca after she was freed. Likewise, Roger was also glad to be free. Oh, that's better, he said with relief. On the part of the ship where Dr. Aegon was situated, he had been watching everything. His pet falcon, Trump, was confused that his master would just watch and not do anything. You're not going to let him get away with this, are you? He asked in a questionable voice that only a henchman or hench bird could get right. Get away with what? asked Captain Thrice. Unbeknownst to Aegon, Thrice had been listening in to his and Trump's conversation, and he greeted him with a sarcastic, Greetings, old friend, old f friend, panicked Dr. Aegon, trying to find a way out. He pressed some buttons on his neck pendant and turned himself into an old lady. But Captain Thrice wasn't fooled. He used walking stick to pound Dr. Aegon's neck pendant and turn him back into his usual self. Captain Thrice wanted to say something to Aegon, but Isambard interjected instead. Try that again, he said, and the captain will be right behind you, seeing through your pathetic disguises. Thank you, Isambard, replied a sarcastic Captain Thrice. I could have said that for myself. Okay, of course you could have, said a quickly agreeing Isambard. Dr. Aegon saw his chance. When Captain Thrice and Isambard turned around to see to the prisoners, he picked up a trumpet, threw away its bulb, and fired a laser at his enemies. Isambard heard the laser well before Captain Thrice did. Captain! Down! He warned just as the laser fired in their direction. Isambard and Thrice ducked down, and a walking stick was sent flying with the laser missing them by inches. Captain Thrice and Isambard were now at Dr. Aegon's mercy as he prepared to fire his laser trumpet again. It looked like this was the end. Fortunately, Isambard scrambled to his feet and deflected the shot with his super spanger, which he never left home without. The shot was deflected into the hull of the dark station, tearing a hole in it. Dr. Aegon was furious, and a full-on laser battle ensued. At first, Dr. Aegon had the upper hand in the battle, but Isambard managed to deflect almost every shot that Aegon fired into either the Cutting Snark or the Dark Station. But before the battle could reach its climax, Captain Thrice picked up Walking Stick and called a stop to the attacks. He then turned to Dr. Aegon, who backed away so much that he fell onto his trumpet and broke it. As all this was happening, Squeaky collected his arm from the still frozen short thread lead, who said nothing still. Into the paradox, quickly, called Captain Thrice whilst Dr. Aegon was distracted. Roger wasn't sure what he meant by this. The paradox? he asked. Our spaceship, replied Isambard leading Roger and Lyca towards it. That's a spaceship? Roger inquired, not sure what to make of the old half-timbered cottage. Squeaky didn't want to be left behind. He hovered over and joined the soon-to-be crew of the Paradox. Hurry! shouted Isambard as the door was about to close. My arm's killing me, said Squeaky in agony. Please! Don't be leaving Sproggle behind! called a familiar voice. Sproggle scurried in just as the door closed, and the paradox took off. On the cutting snark's deck, 
Dr. Aegon watched the paradox take off. You've got away with it this time, thrice, roared Aegon. But I'll still beat you to Lavender Castle, and then the whole universe will be mine. Short Fred Led, who had just done froze, was unaware of what had been happening. He simply looked around, as baffled as a dim-witted space pirate could be. He didn't have much to say either. All he could say was, Where'd they go? His robot parrot, Ting Lizzy, normally the talkative type, said nothing too. Meanwhile, on board the Paradox, Captain Frost decided to introduce his new crew to their mission. Welcome to the Paradox, he announced in the same grand tone as before. Our quest is to find Lavender Castle and protect it from Dr. Aegon. Are you with me? The new crew felt like they could trust their rescuers, so they all replied with a collective YES! Captain Price had never led a crew before, but he knew he needed to assign them some roles. Now, let's see what we have, he continued. Isambard, as you know, is the engineer. Isambard, upon hearing this, turned around and replied, Aye aye, Captain! Captain Frice then turned to Lyca. Lyca, your medical research has been interrupted, he said. So, I'll continue my research, Captain, said Lyca, who had in turn interrupted the Captain. But I could also be your doctor. This seemed to ease Frice's decision making, so he accepted. Roger was a space freighter pilot, pondered Captain Frys, and with a little bit of help, he could help me fly the Paradox. Walking Stick looked at the flight deck and pointed out, he already is. All systems go, called Roger, pressing a few buttons and flicking a few switches. Unfazed by this, Frys now turned to Squeaky. Sir Squeakalot, will you take up the position of the ship's robot? Squeaky, however, was already carrying out his duties, his first one being to make Captain Frice's tea. One lump or two? He inquired. Um, one, answered Captain Frice reluctantly. Now there was only one person left, Sproggle. What role was he going to play in the Paradox crew? Sproggle, began Captain Frice, you'll have to be the navigator. But Sproggle didn't mind as he had experience, or so he liked to think. Ooh, warm, pleasurable feelings, said Sproggle, happy as he could be. The new crew of the spaceship Paradox wasn't exactly what Captain Frice had imagined, but he was pleased nonetheless. I seem to have found the crew, he thought out loud. Of sorts, anyway. Now the quest to find Lavender Castle could finally begin. Full steam ahead then, for Lavender Castle, announced Captain Frice to his excited crew. Full power, Captain, said Isambard. Soul mine, Captain, exclaimed Roger. To Lavender Castle, called Lyca excitedly. Which way's that then? asked Sproggle innocently. The next story is called Flower Power. All was quiet aboard the spaceship Paradox. Lyca was doing her medical research, Sir Squeakalot was doing the spring cleaning, or rather his equivalent of spring cleaning on account of the fact that the four seasons don't exist in the space skies, and Captain Frice was having one of his usual naps. But everything was soon interrupted when an alarm went off. <laughs> I'm picking up a distress call, Captain, called Roger. Captain Price woke up with a start. He immediately recognised what sort of alarm it was. It's the intergalactic distress call, exclaimed Captain Price. Action stations, everybody! He raced to the flight deck and joined Roger, switching off the Paradox's secondary autopilot on the way. Despite having no sense of direction, Sproggle directed the Paradox as it flew towards the source of the distress call. Turn left, he said, somewhere between a little and a lot. He means towards that distant planet, corrected Captain Frice, 
knowing by now that Sproggle's directions, although simple, could sometimes be useful. It's called the Dragon's Planet, squeaked a nervous Sproggle, and Sproggle doesn't want to go. But somebody down there's in trouble, said Captain Thrice in a commanding tone. We have to go. Unlike Sproggle, Roger needed no second bidding. Starting descent, Captain, he announced. Soon the paradox was heading towards the Dragon's Planet, a planet filled with a desolate atmosphere and strange-looking pods on sticks. What are those? asked the curious Roger. Like the rest of the crew, he wasn't sure what the mysterious objects were. They're dragons, they are! said a terrified Sproggle. But Lyca, who was on her own quest to find plants for medical purposes, knew exactly what these objects were. They're not dragons, Sproggle. They're giant plants, she said smartly. Now, where's that signal coming from? Between a bit to the right, began Sproggle, and a little bit more to the right. This time, he was more confident in where the paradox was going. Roger, however, simply rolled his eyes. He's trying his best, Roger, said Lyca in response. I know, Lyca, that's what worries me replied Roger. Suddenly, one of Sproggle's monitors flashed with an outline of where the distress call was coming from, one of the giant plant pods. Turn a lot to the right! A huge lot to the right! cried Sproggle, excited. Pleased that Sproggle had got something right for once, Roger flew towards the source, but he soon became unsure about what he was flying towards. Um, Captain? said Roger, wanting to turn back. Keep going, interrupted Captain Fries, who was eager to help out whoever had sent the signal. Roger complied and landed the paradox inside the pod. He and the rest of the crew weren't prepared for what was inside. There was an entire house inside. I've never seen anything like it, said a surprised Lyca. She then wondered if whoever sent the distress call lived in the house. Why don't we go and have a look? asked Captain Fryce. So he, Walking Stick, Roger and Lyca went to investigate. Using Walking Stick as a door knocker, much to her chagrin, Captain Fryce knocked on the door of the house. It swung open and Roger looked inside to see what he could find. Then something caught his eye. Look! called Roger to the others. There, in the middle of the room was a little old lady lying in a bed. She looked very ill, almost as if she was about to die. You've come at last, croaked the old lady rather weakly. Lyca walked over to her. We picked up your distress call, she said. How long have you been like this? I don't know, my dear, replied the old lady. When you're on your own, Time plays all sorts of tricks. But you're not on your own any more, comforted Lyca. Roger, draw the curtains. And Roger did. On board the Paradox, Sproggle was worried. He only had Squeaky for company, and even he seemed to be ignoring him. Squeaky, wake up! shouted Sproggle. Why are you asleep? I'm not asleep, Mr. Sproggle, replied Squeaky suddenly. I'm charging me batteries. Sproggle doesn't like this place, said Sproggle as he was looking out the window. There's dragons out there. It was almost like he was trying to warn the rest of the crew about something. Meanwhile, inside the house, the old lady was taking what seemed to be her dying breath. Captain, she asked. You've been so kind, and yet you've come too late. She trembled as she spoke. Let me see your crew so that I can thank them. It would make me very happy. Captain Thrice wasn't sure about this. Had he seen this old lady before somewhere? But being the kindly type, he agreed, as did Lyca. Pretty soon, the rest of the crew were at the old lady's bedside. You have a fine crew, Captain, 
said the old lady thoughtfully. Strong, brave and healthy. Sproggle didn't like where this was heading. Yes, you will all make perfect prisoners! With those words, the old lady cackled as she pulled out a familiar-looking neck pendant, pressed some of its buttons, and turned herself into... Dr. Aegon. The crew gasped in fear, and Sproggle attempted to make a run for it. But Aegon locked the door just as he got there. This time, there was no escape. I've waited a long time for this, Captain Thrice! hissed Dr. Aegon. Captain Thrice looked out the window and saw that everything was going dark. What's happening? he asked. The pod's closing, that's what. Soon you and the Paradox will be trapped, laughed Aegon. A sudden crash was heard as the pod closed, <laughs> trapping the crew inside. It won't open again until sunrise said Dr. Aegon as if he knew the planet inside out. I've got you, Thrice! He continued as the bed slid into the wall, taking him with it. The crew were stunned at what had happened. Isambard, on the other hand, walked to where the bed was, interested in its workings. Hey, that's a very interesting piece of equipment, pondered Isambard. But how do we get out of here? worried Lyca. She wasn't too fond of confined spaces like this house of horrors she and the rest of the crew were in right now. Look, it's all right, lassie, comforted Isambard. If Dr. Aegon can find a way out, we can too. There must be an external exit mechanism round here somewhere. As Isambard looked, Captain Thrice noticed the obvious way out. Sir Squeakalot, he commanded. The door, if you please. Certainly, sir, said Squeaky. He hovered over to the door, and using his laser, blew it up. Broken bits of wood flew everywhere. And then there's the subtle approach, said Isambard nonchalantly. Come on, everyone, called Captain Thrice, leading the crew outside the house and back into the paradox. At the same time, Dr. Aegon had made his way through the pod's slimy insides, and was now outside it, standing on top. He summoned his pet falcon, Trump, with his trumpet, and Trump landed on Aegon's shoulder. Is the dark station on its way? Aegon asked. It is! cried Trump. Good, said Aegon, pleased with the way his plan was going. You can tell the ship to dock and assist star prisoners aboard when the pod opens. I will wait here until then. Trump flew off excitedly. That night, inside the Paradox, Captain Thrice called a meeting of the crew. Let me sum up the situation, he began. We're trapped inside this giant plant, and there's no way out until it opens tomorrow morning. And by that time, the Dark Station will be here and we'll be Aegon's prisoners, complained Walking Stick. That sums it up, I suppose, said Captain Thrice. Does anybody have any good suggestions? But nobody could think of anything. Not even Isambard, normally the second smartest member of the crew, could think of anything. All he did was sneeze. Um, uh, achoo! Bless you, said Lyca. Just then, she thought of something. Hold on, bless you. I have an idea, Captain, she announced, inspired. It's pretty wild, but it's worth a try. And what is it, Lyca? inquired Captain Thrice. Lyca whispered something in his ear, and he grew intrigued. I suppose anything's worth a try, he said, giving a chuckle. Lyca worked all throughout the night on carrying out the idea she had thought of, no one else knew what it was, but they didn't want to disturb her. Captain Thrice, on the other hand, was looking at one of the Paradox's monitors. When he saw the Dark Station approaching the planet, it immediately clicked. The name Dragon's Planet was actually code for Dr. Aegon's planet. I should have realised, he sighed. Walking Stick simply tutted. 
By the time the early morning came round, Lyca had almost finished her mystery experiment. However, something was missing from it. I can't remember the final ingredient, complained Lyca. Then something mysterious happened. A lavender-coloured ray emitted from Walking Stick's foot. This was one of the powers that Lavender Castle had given her and enveloped Lyca's head. The ray faded just as soon as it had been emitted, and Lyca suddenly remembered. Squeaky, fetch me that bottle over there, she cried. Yes, Miss Lyca, replied the robot. Pretty soon the experiment was finished, and Captain Thrice opened the door of the paradox. It's up to you now, Lyca, he said, looking on as Lyca stepped out. She spread her wings and flew up to the top of the plant's inside. When she reached the top, Lyca took out a vial full of the experiment, which looked to be a powder of some kind, poured it onto her hand and blew it onto the plant. I hope this works, said Lyca. Lyca got back on board the paradox just as the pot started rumbling and groaning. You'd better hang on to something, she called out, and the rest of the crew scrambled to find something to hang on to. Dr. Agon, however, was not so lucky. He tried to regain his balance as the pod swayed from side to side, but he simply collapsed with nothing to hang on to. Then, with an almighty whoosh, the pod propelled the paradox out of its mouth, and it was back in the space skies, continuing its search to find Lavender Castle. Ha ha ha! Fantastic! laughed Roger, who was now back at the controls. What did you make, Lyca? Explosives? Sort of, Roger replied Lyca. It's sneezing powder. Oh, sneezing powder, said Isambard as he walked over to Lyca. Now why didn't I think of that? Well, in a strange way, Isambard, said Lyca, you did. I did, smiled Isambard, pleased that he had helped save the day. As the paradox flew through the space skies once more, Roger couldn't help but think about something. I wonder what happened to Dr. Aegon, queried Roger. He must have been blown right off the top. Captain Thrice said nothing and just smiled. Roger didn't know how right he was. The force of the pod sneeze had propelled Dr. Aegon through to where the dark station was waiting. This is Dr. Aegon. I'm coming aboard, he shouted, expecting the doors to open. But Trump, who was in the control room, was in one of his mischievous moods and wouldn't open the door. Aegon ended up slamming onto the hull of the ship. As he slid down, he sighed. It would be a while yet before he could catch up with the Paradox and its crew.